So in the last video we saw variables and we particularly saw integer type variable and floating point uh, variable type. We also saw very briefly on Jupyter Notebook we saw complex and string as well. Um, so in this video we are going to talk about operators. Uh, basically the arithmetic operators. Obviously, if you are defining variables, uh, you're not defining the, them, the variables just to just to view them later on. Uh, most probably you'll be storing data to the variables and then you are, you are applying some computation on a set of variables together, computing new results, saving that and doing some stuff. Most probably you will be adding two variables some one way or the other in, inside a program you may have to add two variables, you may have to subtract a variable from the other, you may have to divide a variable, you may have to compute. For example, these are arithmetic operators. Let me let me just, this, this plus symbol is used to add two variables. This minus symbol or subtraction is used to subtract a variable value from the other variable value. Obviously, these all are operated on values, not the names. Uh, division, um, it, like like the name suggests, it's, if you want to divide this, this percentage symbol, it, when it is applied to to different variables, if x is on left and y is on right, what it does it uh, it actually divides x by y and checks what the remainder is. For example, if x is twenty seven and y is five, then what's the remainder? What do you think? Um, if we divide twenty seven by five, what's the remainder? The remainder will be two. Yes. So the result will be two here. So this computes the remainder. This multiplication, this star symbol is used as multiplication. Like in mathematics, we normally write this cross symbol, but in, in, in Python and in most of programming languages, star symbol is used to achieve multiplication. This double slash is like the division, but uh, it is division with the result flow to the quotient. Uh, what I'm saying is the following. For example, if you divide, um, um, let's say, 10 by 3, the result will be a floating point number and the result will be 3.33, something like so. But if you want just a quotient, not the remainder, uh, if you want the integer, that's the quotient value, uh, 10, you write the double slash 3 and it will return just the value that is uh, that is there before the decimal expansion. So this value will be returned. So this is kind of the integer division or floor division. This double star is used to compute the power. For example, if you want to compute two, you write double star four, that means two raised to the power four. In mathematics, we write this as following. And the result will be 16. You can save that result in another variable or you can just print it or you can write that in a file or whatever. So these are most important um, operators. One thing that I want to tell you that these operators are not just for integers and floating point numbers. The applications of these uh, operators is much broader than these. Later we will see the objects or the data types that are collections and very, uh, I mean, uh, the data types that are beyond these integers and floats and still there this plus minus division and all some of these or all of these they have their meanings there uh, even 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 this plus is used for strings now think for example if you have a, a, a string let's say hello and you have another string for example let's say this is string s1 and you have another string let's say s2 which is y then Python allows you even to add these kind of data types. Although some doesn't make any sense uh, with these kind of string variables, but we will see for different kind of data types, the, the definition of these operators, they actually change or adapt it accordingly. For example, in mathematics, we are much more fluent uh, for, with plus, with division, with subtraction, and it makes sense to add two integers to subtract a floating point number from another floating point number and stuff. But with data type that is unfamiliar to you right now, these operators may not make that sense to you, but there are definitions, there, there are ways to use these variables for the data types that are even 
that are even beyond an integer and floating point numbers. We will see all these details as we move on, uh, as we move on to, as we move on to the videos and uh, I mean as in, in, in later on we will see all these things in detail but just to tell you that these operators are not just limited to integers and floating point numbers or complex numbers they can be applied to uh, several different data types so um, a lot of words I guess you are bored now let's go to Jupyter Notebook and have fun with these kind of concepts that we are dealing with so uh, yeah here so let's first uh, press escape, then M, just to change it to markdown, and then escape one for heading, big heading. And here I write, let's say operators, and shift enter, it runs and automatically then go to code. Okay, now let's say I have a variable. So let's say what kind of variables I already have. Um, in the previous video, we used that. So we already have these kind of variables with us. Now, what is, let me define a new variable, let's say sum of, sum of a, b, that's a new variable, sum underscore a, b, that's a variable name. You can have a better variable name, maybe sum of a and b, that might be a variable name. Um, it is good to have the variable names that are descriptive, that describe what data is inside. Um, because in, in, in programs, the programs become manageable, readable, and a lot of benefits are there. So sum of A and B, let's say that's a variable name. And you add A, B, you just write A plus B. Um, let me make the zoom level a little high so that you can see it clearly. So A plus B, let's say that's there. Um, if you press Shift Enter, and now you print sum of, by the way, if you have written sum of, you need not write everything, just press Tab, and it will automatically complete um, the remaining part of the variable. And press Shift Enter, and you have eight. If you check the type of this variable, um, sum of tab oh, automatically completes tab com that is called tab completion wow um, it's integer the type of this particular variable is integer that's a new variable and why the type is integer because a was integer b was integer and integer plus an integer is an integer what if we add an integer with a floating point number what do you think what should be the result if I just type type um, a, that's an integer, plus uh, d, which is a floating point number. So a plus d, the result will be here. And type of that result, what will be the type of that result? What do you think? Let me pause here uh, for a few minutes and, oh no, 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 not for a few minutes, for a few maybe seconds, maybe two or three seconds. What will be the result? What will be the type of an integer and a float combined? Well, um, the types are upcasted, which means the floating point number, the result will be a floating point number. And the reason is every integer by default is a floating point number. A floating point number is a is an upper class or you can say a superset. Uh, so a Python, in Python, by default, the types are upcasted to super supersets. So here, integer plus a float, the result will be a floating point number, and that's the result. You you might be thinking why we have why we haven't stored the result in another variable. Well, if we want to store the result in another variable, we can, or if we just compute the result and apply some operation on that, we can do that. For example, we we could do the following. For example, a plus d. That's whatever the result is raised to the power 3 whatever the result is whatever the result is um, divided by maybe 4 and we just save that in a new variable let's say um, let's say the new variable is v let's say we save that value in v and now we print v and we have the result for v uh, wow, 
So we can do a lot of stuff with these kind of variables. Let me show you a fancy stuff that we will see later on. Don't worry if you don't get it, just S1, for example. S1 is hello, hello, and let's say S2 is world. And we have another variable, let's say S, which is S1 plus S2. What it will do is it will just concatenate them together. We will see strings a lot later on, but just to tell you this plus is not just for not just for numbers. It is for other data types, very fancy data types that are there. Um, one more thing, let's say we define 10 and we divide it by three and we want a quotient. The quotient is three. However, if we have 10 divided by three shift enter the result actually is 3.33 and so on you might be wondering we have not saved that result in a particular variable uh, so where the result is saved actually if you do not if you do not save the result if you do not assign the result for example it, in this way the result will be assigned to a variable r but if you do not assign if you do not store the result in a particular variable explicitly by default, there is a variable in uh, Python, which is underscore. Underscore contains the last result that you did not store in a particular variable explicitly. So if that underscore is basically um, one default variable for, for the result, if you want. Don't try to uh, update this underscore. Um, just, just read it. Do not assign anything to underscore. For example, if you assign something to underscore, assignment will be done, but then the uh, properties of uh, underscore will no longer be there as they are in, in Python built-in properties. Okay, so that's about it, I guess. Uh, so that was the operators. Uh, we will see the operators more and more later on, but before ending this video, I leave you with a question. So the question is, we, we saw the variable names like uh, sum of a and b, x, y, variable name can be, uh, can be lengthy, can be descriptive, can be short, anyways. So the question really is, can a variable name start with a digit? For example, is it possible that the variable name really is, um, is starts from, the variable name starts from, for example, a digit? Is a 3x valid variable name uh, or for example at the rate of at the rate of y is that a variable name or for example this symbol times 2 times x is that a variable name what are the conventions to for variable names can we can we write anything in the left hand side we write let's say 3x is equal to 4 that means 3x is now a variable name is that true in Python? Or are there conventions to define the variable names? So yeah, think about it. I'll, I'll see you in the next video with the answer to this. So I hope you will, you'll be having answer for this question. Hope to see you in the next video.